that you know Madonna might show up with like music or performer or something but how did you end up uh thinking through that all right so let me um give you the insight um i will in a moment share with you i have too many windows but let's see okay so nathan's question was or is about um how do i distinguish between the three different um types of moderna or how do i uh, understand what those terms mean uh, did i hard code the knowledge graph or ontology how do i associate words with the meaning so let's see um, um, uh, my review here uh, this is a keynote i gave in 2013 and um, it basically uh, you know uh, talks about, um, you know, I talk about the ontologies and the fact that we can now build ontologies for, you know, for many things. So here uh, on this slide, I show that um, we can have ontologies about news and within them political news or sports or business or entertainment, financial markets, terrorism, uh, medicine and healthcare and so on and so forth or even very specific thing like anti-money la laundering or equity research. These are the applications. And you can have ontology or knowledge graph about each of them. And I will give you some insight into the process of developing this ontology and associating. And then when you crawl the web page to connect the uh, what you find, words on the web page uh, to the ontology, and then you'll be able to see how uh, that is uh, then uh, used for search. So uh, there are three broad approaches uh, by which ontologies may be created. Uh, you know, it could be manual uh, or by a committee. Uh, in the previous, uh, uh, you know, on this slide here, I mentioned a couple of terms here. Go ontology is a gene ontology. And UMLS is a unified medical library system uh, and that is also kind of a nomenclature from which you can basically structure it and create an ontology. So uh, though that is a process where humans come together, collectively work on that, just like you do Wikipedia editing, similarly you edit your ontology. The second is automatic taxonomy generation or extraction. So by using statistical clustering, NLP, and variety of other techniques, you can, uh, given a corpus, you can create your taxonomy automatically. Although there are some problems and I'm, you know, just giving you a very high view of it. And the third is where you actually construct it by uh, uh, extracting uh, information and, you know, and, 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 and map it into this knowledge base. Uh, so, uh, I can decide that I want to have sports ontology, I want to have uh, entertainment ontology or knowledge graph or a world model. Then I would discuss, discuss you know, a model, uh, if you are aware of entity relationship model or conceptual model, then you say, I have um, concept of an artist, within that it is an actor uh, uh, or performer or entertainer. And then within that, I would have instances of that. So. Uh, and then the, uh, that is so the you know is a schema level and then what is called as a description or assertion level meaning the actual instance level that moderna is an artist moderna is a musician that uh, you know is the, the instance level thing then basically we figure out a way to do this in a very scalable manner so um oh this is a, a, a you know just slightly slight distraction but this is a very important uh, um, uh, slide here or, or material here, um, it kind of uh, helps you understand uh, different important terms and different uh, levels of representation of data and information. So at a very basic or bottom level, you have data that is unstructured data like text, you have um, semi-structured data like XML, 
uh, and then you have structured data like relational database. Um, and, you know, and, and you have no SQL databases that is somewhere in the semi-structured, uh, you know, form. After that, you have metadata. So it is metadata is data about data. So I say, oh, there is a file, and uh, this uh, file has this format, and this document is this length, or this is the day it was created. All of these kind of stuff are syntactic metadata. They don't tell you what the data is about, but they tell you about data in a very generic context uh, of generic nature. Then your structure metadata saying how information is structured. Like, you know, in a, in a, in a book, you have a ch uh, chapter and chapter has sections. That's a structure. But then people have developed very comprehensive structure uh, for electronic exchange of document called, um, uh, you know, uh, XML. Uh, well, that is where from where you actually came up with HTML and XML. So there was something called um, uh, document uh, related uh, markup. Um, the name is keeping my, you know, right now. Uh, and from that HTML, HTML, okay, it was called SGML. Um, and SGML uh, was a markup language from which HTML was uh, created by, you know, and Tim berners basically created HTML from by looking at SGML. It's a simpler, very simpler form of um, uh, SGML uh, meant for uh, structure, talking about the structure of a web page. So SGML uh, has a tag called H1. H1 is the head H1 and H2 and so on and so forth. And from that came uh, Excel, uh, XSL and for you know XML data exchange and so on and so forth. So that was structure metadata. Now comes semantic metadata. Now this is describes you something about the data itself. Not a uh, generic thing about data, but what data says. What is the meaning of what, what, what is represented the data? So, say, so, oh, there is an image, and the image is of upper abdomen, or there is an organ liver in this image. So, it's not about pixel. It's not about the, uh, you know, whether it's black and white. It's not about the pixel has a, a 256 color, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, levels. But uh, it is actually what it says, what is meaningful to human. And then at the very top level, you have uh, ontology or knowledge graph. It says, I'm going to describe anatomy of human. I'm going to talk about diagnostics of a um, car. Those are the things that, uh, you know, are uh, going to the ontology. And uh, you're going from low level data representation to meaning as you go up this um, hierarchy. So it's very important. Now, let us look at how we created, uh, you know, what, what is described in the pattern basically is that you have this ontology and uh, you have uh, essentially we wrote this so called knowledge uh, uh, agents that went to knowledge sources and pull up the data that we wanted and then stuffed it into ontology. But you have to be very careful. For example, uh, what if um, there are two different uh, places that disagree in what it is. So suppose my ontology talks about uh, a person who is playing at the midfield, okay, in, in that game. But uh, the in one source uh, that is older says this person in this team plays at this uh, look uh, this um, position. A more recent uh, page somewhere else says uh, no, but this other person is playing. In fact, uh, in ontology, here's a very interesting example. Uh, we this was um, uh, December year 2000, right? And so we had um, uh, uh, in the ontology a knowledge saying Hillary Clinton is uh, the first lady. Uh, first lady is a is a political office, and so it says Hillary Clinton is first lady. Well, uh, when our knowledge agent went back in ja after January 20 of 20, 2000. It found from the source that it no longer Hillary Clinton, but Laura Bush is the uh, first lady. So now I have two different facts. Hillary Clinton is first lady and Laura Bush is first lady. Which one is correct? So this is called disambiguation. And we have to make that decision. Uh, uh, I, I, if I go into discussing that, it will take up the whole class. So I will defer it right now. But basically, you, you uh, get knowledge from any sources and continue to add to your knowledge. Um, then you have all the data. And then this data is being accepted by content agent. 
these content agent are a more sophisticated version of web crawler so you know any any search engine uh, google or bing or prior search engines they all would have uh, web crawlers they will basically go from one web page to another web page to another web page by um, uh, as you go on a web page they will harvest all the uh, links in that web page put it in a database and then ch change that links again so this is how they go from one page to another page to another page trying to uh, uh, you know cover the whole web right uh, of course it is not as simple as that and um, you know in in some other class i used to teach uh, uh, search engine design but anyway you go to uh, you know you have this content extractor and there are different kinds of uh, uh, content sources so you have web, you know databases uh, you have uh, websites you have document databases and all that kind of stuff so our agents will go there and uh, they will use uh, classification techniques um, you know basically statistical machine learning techniques to try and figure out what is this page about uh, I hold on to this thought. I'll give you an example in a few moments. But basically, it this will classify saying this page is about sports, this page is about uh, uh, entertainment. So uh, you know, uh, this page is about uh, something else. So it's you know uh, about business. So for example, when you come across Tiger, uh, a page that talks about Tiger Wood, you want to know whether this is a page about Tiger Wood endorsing somebody or Tiger Wood playing at a Masters tournament, right? Uh, and that is what this thing will do. So it will give you the uh, context. Uh, so, okay, uh, or identify the domain of interest. And then whatever you extract is put in the metabase. Uh, with, these are all the metadata. Remember I showed you in the previous, um, you know, pyramid, the metadata. So all kinds of metadata are stored here, syntactical and semantic. And then uh, you have, um, you know, uh, your application. So search, semantic search engine, semantic browsing, uh, and personalization, advertisement, all of those things are uh, the applications that use this metadata to this to serve. So uh, the ontology that we had designed, had, you know, uh, there are multiple different cases. In some cases, uh, we had few classes. In other cases, we have tens of classes and relationship. Then uh, we had, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands to several million entities and relationships. And then, uh, you know, you have a few tens of knowledge sources. And from that, we had millions of, uh, you know, instances. Uh, you know, uh, in, by instance, I mean a particular uh, web page on which Madonna uh, is being talked about in context of this particular album that she has released. Um, and uh, so this shows you a schema, for example. This is a simple uh, schema that is designed for entertainment industry. And so here is a product and this is a track and see these are all the things about the track and you know you you know you want to accept all of the things what is the track title from a web page you want to find out on this web page where is the uh, text that is actually the title of the uh, you know track okay um, uh, so here it is showing you um, uh, you know the actual instances actual database snapshot in this particular case, in, in the entertainment ontology, just for that, we had uh, maybe about 20 million objects. Okay, so 20 million instances. Um, and uh, this was extracted from six different databases. Um, and there are a lot of technical challenges, dirty data, non-normalization, uppercase versus lowercase text analysis, uh, and so on and so forth. Again, this is um, a field in itself, and I can discuss this in detail, but I can, I'll point out to you, Nathan, a couple of papers that discusses this in detail, so you can go in that. I'm not sure the whole class is important, interested in that. But all of these are involved in so-called ambiguity uh, resolution. And then we had another ontology, and uh, I'm showing here, uh, you know, practically how long it takes to build these kind of ontologies or knowledge graphs and so on and so forth with the automation that we had. So we had a substantial amount of tooling. So the way the ontology was created is like this. So uh, here we are creating, um, uh, you know, a schema. So this particular tool allows us to design the schema saying uh, in the sports uh, ontology, we will have the sport type of sports, professional or amateur. Within that uh, professional, you'll say, uh, you know, football, and then you'll go to NFL. All that is modeled in here. 
Then using that schema, you uh, implement um, agents. So we had a uh, widget uh, based uh, GUI driven uh, or uh, you know tool that will allow you to create the agent automatically. So I had hired, for example, a music major, uh, undergrad music major to run this thing to actually uh, extract a knowledge from different sources and then uh, you know populate our ontology. And so uh, this one shows you see here uh, we are talking about uh, you can see on the left hand side uh, you know uh, uh, entity is a person and person it can be a politician a business person within business person it can be company executive analyst within this analysis it can be stock analysis bond analysis right so you can see you get get I get an idea and this is we can graphically basically design our um, a schema for the ontology. And then there are relationship. A person is related to person. A person has social security number. Uh, a terrorist uh, may have threat score, whatever it is, right? So those kind of things are, uh, you know, uh, model here. And you can see person, business person, analyst, stock analysis, all that kind of stuff. And you are trying to, uh, you know, also I find relationship. Analyst works for a company. A stock analysis tracks a sector. A business person owns a share in a company. Owns shares in a company. Right? So these are all the things that you need to extract. And then this one shows you uh, how when, when you extract it, we can um, uh, analyze and saying how much uh, knowledge we extracted and what is the state of it and what's the error and how do we resolve the error and all kinds of, um, you know, uh, things that we have to deal with. And then here we are now uh, creating and configuring knowledge agent to populate the ontology so this is the one that will go to different websites to pick up uh, knowledge and populate the ontology and they are, they are, there is a whole system to schedule it so some uh, uh, you know will go this sub agent will be run very often and this will run a couple of times a year because the knowledge doesn't change in those fields that often and then uh, we would create so you can see here different sources are shown in the top and the knowledge uh, agents will go to them and then they will populate this ontology you see on our world model or or, or 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 knowledge graph this is this is how a knowledge graph looks like right so it says uh, you know uh, this, this is channel partner version network siemens network fipro group uh, ulysses group right so all that kind of things are uh, being extracted and put in here uh, you can say cisco system belongs to this industry uh, this executives work for Cisco, Cisco system. All that kind of knowledge is uh, put in there, and then uh, we can run uh, queries against them. Uh, and uh, I have examples of ontology. So uh, there can be a simple ontology. Uh, this entire money laundering uh, ontology. This was necessary after 9/11. A government came up with a rule called Patriot Patriot Law, where they required that uh, you know terrorists cannot have I have bank account and that kind of stuff. So uh, this was created and then uh, it looked, uh, you know, something like this. So you can see a thing and there's an account number and, uh, you know, a person, person has an account number, you know, and, and, and there is a transaction and transaction value. All this, you know, knowledge can be created. And uh, here is, uh, you know, and these are the different sources where we got. So we had 1.5 million entities in those days and that kind of stuff for just this particular part. And there are a lot of technical challenges uh, and then you see about extracting metadata so the thing here is that we could extract metadata from all kinds of web pages pages with digital images pages with digital audios pages with uh, just tags uh, pages with news items pages with map so we would write extractors uh, to uh, crawl through all these kind of pages and get the metadata so uh, let me show you an example so this is a web page. Uh, this was a page in year 2000, December 07. And uh, uh, when we run this page uh, through that auto, uh, classification system, it will say that this page is about baseball. You see, these are all the different potential categories or classes uh, that you can have. Uh, you know, this meaning, uh, let me see if I can. Um, So, so, so you can see this, these are the various, um, uh, you know, uh, categories or classes, but, uh, and now what happens is that the system says, oh, this is baseball. 
So I am going to look for a baseball people in that. I am not going to look for some other name. So if you have, um, you know, Andy Ashby, uh, he used to be a player there. Uh, Andy Ashby could be a baseball player, but it could be some other person also. There will be 10, and, and, you know, uh, Andy Ashby. But because I have already classified this as baseball, I will conjecture that Andy Ashby here is actually that baseball player that I know about. So uh, and and so I would find all of these uh, players and I would uh, actually also hypertext linked. Uh, so I, all the knowledge about Bobby Bonilla is something that my application knows. So these are semantic metadata, uh, and then um, uh, you know um, Okay, it doesn't want to expand. Um. So um, with this page, for example, um, how would you know that this is about baseball and not about the Braves? How would you know that baseball is higher up and like the uh, ontology hierarchy for it to be about baseball and then within baseball, it's about a baseball team? Uh, did you have to train uh like how to figure out what would be like uh higher in, in like a hierarchy of uh things that you would extract from like these web pages yeah so this will be uh, uh this will be a model uh you know in the ontology remember i showed you the ontology uh schema that schema would basically have baseball baseball uh, you know uh, baseball team and in the team there is a player and the player is plays at a position all that kind of stuff okay uh, now this guy doesn't want to seem to move But um, what, what I'm saying is um, when you have an article like this, uh, how would you make like a hierarchy and say that this is about baseball within baseball, this is about the Braves? Why wouldn't you say this is about the Braves and within the Braves, this is a baseball team and these are the Braves players? Uh, um, How would it auto categorize? Uh, so that that is what you that is what you uh, that is what the schema design tells you. Right? When you did the schema design, um, uh, the uh, the schema is designed to conceptualize the world. Uh, the world in the world you know you know. Uh, you know uh, that uh, um, the uh, you know game sorry the sports type then comes a uh, team that is what our designers know and so when they design the uh, schema for the ontology that's what they do now guys if... uh, all right My computer is stuck here uh, and it doesn't want to move. Um, so, I hope I don't have to. Um, right, uh, we humans can um, uh, simultaneously process text. Uh, you are reading it. Uh, you are watching. Uh, you know, for example, video here. Uh, you are, um, uh, uh, you know, hearing. Right. So all of this data is coming through your senses to your brain, and you don't. 
tell your brain to think differently for images and text. It just does it, right? And if there is a uh, pixel in which, um, you know, one of your name is spelled versus text in ASCII, where it is spelled, versus a photograph of that person is given, I can seamlessly connect all of them, right? Why and how? How are we going? To, how are we able to do that? So, uh, the point here is that suppose I have uh, an image of a person. Suppose I have the name of the person mentioned in text. Suppose I have name of the person uh, mentioned in a um, image form. Uh, suppose I speak the name of the person. Your mental image. You, if there's something in your brain in in your knowledge. Uh, uh, that say that that associates each of the different uh, ways of describing this person, of uh, you know displaying the characteristics of this person, it brings together, right? How are are the um, basic um, uh, computational algorithms uh, capable of doing that? So, can text processing do that? No, it only can do text. Can image processing do that? No, it can only do image. It can't combine speech and text and so on and so forth. Right? So what an important thing I want you to kind of uh, take away with what I'm saying right now is that where it is critical that we develop the technologies that deal with different modalities, different types of data. And when, if you want to do that, it is nearly impossible to do that at a low level of data. You need to go up in that pyramid that I showed you. And you need a model. You need to say there is a person, there is a person has a name, and there are many artifacts that instantiates that person. And, uh, in, and you, use, you need to be able to use different uh, techniques. For uh, One thing for speech recognition, from that pick out the name of a person, Another is for text processing, pick out the name of entity recognition, right? And then bring out together. So it's a very important area of uh, work. Uh, uh, and, and there, uh, the uh, semantics and knowledge plays very, very important role. Uh, and this is an area where there is a huge scope. So uh, one of the area of work we do uh, or and have started to do is AI manufacturing. Uh, and uh, so here um, uh, in McNair uh, Aerospace Center, uh, my colleague uh, Remy Herrick has built uh, a, a automated assembly line with the robots and all that. And there we have uh, a lot of sensors. We have temperature sensors that uh, you know measures the temperature of robot arm. If it is hot, it can fail. We have visual, visual sensors that is in the robot arm. So you can look at the actual, um, uh, you know, uh, item that arm has captured. Uh, we have a camera that uh, tells you where that particular, um, uh, you know, uh, part widget is on the assembly line. We have um, a drone that can go around and pick up any object that you want. Uh, so we have basically uh, temperature, uh, video, photograph. Uh, all kinds of uh, you know data coming at us, and there's a lot of data coming at us, right? Because these are all uh, you know uh, medium that collect a very large volume of data, and then uh, we want to be able to say, is anything going wrong on the assembly line, and how can I automatically fix that? Right. So when we want to do this kind of computation, we need to be able to. Uh, really make that data that each of the sensors are collecting meaningful, right? Uh, or make the textual data meaningful. Well, uh, right now we start, we are starting with the um, um, social media data, which comes with its own unique uh, challenges. So I'm going to, um, uh, you know, give you a little bit of glimpse uh, uh, today before we run out of the time. Uh, let us look at, um, uh, a few uh, interesting things about. Um, so uh, this is our um, um, uh, a little bit about um, 
so uh, uh, you know basically i uh, just to give you an idea this is this is actually a talk on um uh, semantic empowered smart city uh, uh, and uh, i want to discuss here a little example so uh, here is a uh, you know uh, an example where um, i want this is a smart city application so i have a physical data in that map i you know the color on the you know red color shows that traffic is going very slow there i have um, uh, data on a web page lane remains closed during uh, you know accident i have social media data this is uh, you can see only the left lane of i-77 south at bridgewood uh, road is open due to an uh, overturned semi i have uh, a data from um, uh, data.gov that tells you about um, all the physical information uh, on the transportation network. So in this particular case, um, uh, you know, um, uh, so a city government, uh, I, I'm showing you some of the departments of city government, public safety, urban planning, energy and water, transportation, education, right? Here, um, um, uh, I want to show you that all you know, a lot of people uh, are on social media. Uh, they talk about things that are of importance to digital government or smart cities. So here, um, uh, uh, I have this data. I have this Twitter data. I have this kind of data, and look what is happening. So and then I have a data on the road network. And in this case, um, what is happening is that uh, uh, there is this link. I'm showing you, and that link, uh, the speed is kind of slow for the speed limit that it has, and it has it shows you time. Uh, so this is this data is available in real time, and it says there is a slow moving traffic. So now I want to know why is traffic moving slow here. This link says this is a link. Uh, it is from this street to that street, and the speed limit is whatever. Um, and it, this shows the link in the map, and uh, this shows that is uh, that there is a scheduled baseball game uh, here. Where you, where you see a uh, the the pin a, uh, there is a scheduled baseball game on in the stadium. So maybe this can explain to you that given the current time and where uh, this particular location is, why is this game slow? So it says there is a game with Mariners. Uh, and um, that event is scheduled, so that is probably the reason. Right? So you want to explain or interpret average speed and link a travel time using uh, event uh, schedule provided by city authorities and real-time traffic event, uh, event shared on Twitter. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, let's look at uh, the thing. Now, um, uh, in some cases, you want to be able to, uh, uh, this was not anomaly because this was planned. But uh, traffic is not some, you know, accident is not something planned. So that is an anomaly. Uh, a bad weather is not exactly planned. So that can be an anomaly. So uh, you want to be able to say, are people talking about city traffic? Uh, can we extract city traffic related events from Twitter? How can we leverage event and location knowledge base for event, event extraction? How can we extract city events? Uh, here I'm showing you that um, uh, uh, this is real data on Twitter. And I'm showing you that this data uh, are, relate to different departments. So basically this is uh, uh, what we are doing here is automatic classification. Um, and this classification is not only using machine learning, but it's also using knowledge based techniques to together uh, come up with a good accurate prediction of what kind of you know what what department uh, of the city government this uh, think is relevant this street is relevant so uh, some challenges is that not well accepted definition of event in city tweets are short uh, hard to identify entity location time and type of event um, number uh, just there are more report doesn't mean that they are meaningful 
um, and many and whether we uh, you know whether we can validate the source or not. Anyway, I want to show you one thing and then uh, call it a day for today. Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, okay. So here, what I'm showing you is that uh, you can see that on the left there are tweets from the city that are coming in. And in this particular case, and uh, you know, you are um, you want to find out city event uh, that is occurring and show the events on the map. And you can see on the map on the you know right top uh, the intensity of the traffic in that map. Uh, so the yellow and orange increase shows that traffic is very heavy because of San Francisco city area, and and naturally that should be how it should be. Uh, now in this case, what's happening is that um, to understand uh, the location in the uh, tweet from the tweet is a very challenging topic. How do you understand what location it is? So one way you understand location is that um, the uh, person using mobile app has enabled location. So then the accurate location get uh, into the metadata and then we can extract that and we know exactly where that tweet was sent from. But only one to three percent of the people have location enabled. So then the number of uh, tweets with like, exact location is very minimal. So how do I get uh, you know the location? So um, <clears throat> that's a challenging topic. Now uh, let's see. Uh, uh, I don't want to discuss this. But basically, what we are trying to do is to uh, be able to um, say that um, you know there is. Um, a traffic that is slow based on uh, sensor data on the right and that uh, on the left hand side there is social data and that um, uh, you know there is a incidence uh, of road construction and that it it can explain why the traffic is uh, slow on the uh, you know uh, at that location or nearby location uh, let's see uh, so the problem is very challenging because um, uh, traffic uh, dynamics is not very, you know, uh, kind of linear, right? Uh, and and at every time of the day, there is different traffic, and um, uh, on the road, multiple events can occur. Uh, one event can, uh, you know, so you, you might have sports event, and at the same time, there is a accident nearby. The two together create a havoc. So, uh, and each of them will have influence, right? So, uh, the left end you see a, an accident, so uh, speed is slow. Uh, then you see a uh, rush hour, so the speed is slow. And then you see a, uh, a, a, a sports or entertainment event in a big arena, and hence the speed is slow. So you need to find out when the speed is slow for a reason you don't know. And um, uh, there's a lot more I don't, I won't go into detail, but basically we took a, uh, uh, a, 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 a linear dynamical system, a, one of the um, a probabilistic graph models. And what we did was to analyze, um, analyze, um, you know, the uh, normal data. So here is a tra traffic segment, uh, and then here um, it shows the normal traffic uh, uh, from day or day, uh, and then we uh, have to find out um, that um, uh, there is anomaly. So this is uh, I'm showing you some work uh, um, about finding the normal traffic. Uh, and for every hour uh, of the week, seven by 24, we had to create normalcy model because they vary by day of the week and time of, you know, hour of the week. So you can see that um, there's a normal mo model that is created, a normalcy model. And then what we do is to look for <coughs> um, uh, 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 cases where uh, uh, you have anomaly. And then um, we want to uh, explain that anomaly. So uh, uh, this is all machinery to find that, oh, uh, this uh, data shows uh, you know, anomaly. Uh, and then we want to uh, correlate uh, multimodal data stream, in this case, Twitter data. So spatial temporal information uh, at that look near that location at nearby that uh, at that time, what information can I get from social media data? And here, so it shows that um, uh, there is a, a city related tweet uh, uh, that potentially um, explain why the traffic was slow at that point of time, right? And um, uh, there's a lot of detail here, but I'll just try and see if I can show you 
um, uh, one interesting um, slide. No. So, so, so the point is, uh, I think I, I, the slide I'm looking for is not here in this particular case. Uh, but what happens is that basically uh, you are able to identify location for the tweet and the time that tweet was sent, of course, that is easy to identify when the anomaly occurred on the right hand side uh, in the model and then see whether that can explain uh, whether uh, is the reason for these anomalies. And so anyway, this is just gives you a sense that um, uh, but but important takeaway here is that I could not have done this work without use of um, um, these uh, ontologies here. Uh, so these are the open there is OSM is open street map. Uh, Scribe is a uh, IBM developed smart city ontology and 511.org is a transportation uh, related uh, you know uh, model. So all of these came handy in us being able to make the thing smart. What it tells you is that now I, I want to summarize this as say that uh, it is very uh, challenging uh, to make this system intelligent, right? If you just look at the example I said, well, we need to find uh, when the traffic is um, considered to be abnormal. This is not an easy thing, but a human, you are, you are going from your home to, uh, uh, you know, uh, to the campus uh, uh, and uh, uh, on certain time every day, you can say, yeah, today it is slower than usual, right? But for machine to understand today it is slower than usual is very hard, right? And, and, and then for machine to connect with uh, sensor data and social data or textual data, also very hard, right? And, um, uh, uh, I want to, I, I generally like, uh, you know, since this is an advanced seminar course, uh, I want to kind of alert you to a uh, more challenging and more interesting topic. And so uh, one of the takeaways is that multimodal data processing is a very, in, in doing in intelligent applications, applications that involve understanding of multimodal data is very, very challenging. I can give you examples from healthcare. I can give you, I try to give you examples from manufacturing. Uh, we, we of course looked at the transportation in all of these, these domains um, you have data of different modality and trying to connect them and make sense out of is very important in the process i try to explain to you um, you know some of the important concept that there are knowledge graph for ontology and that you need to connect the data to the concepts in the ontology and then you need to try and make the connections between data so you can't connect the data at uh, you can't statistically you know, create a vector of a tweet and a vector of um, uh, 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 sensor data and say, tell me they are related. You can't do that. That At data level, you can't combine them. So you have to abstract at a semantic level and then connect them. There are three words that um, are very important in our current line of work. And this is something that at least my students on this call should really uh, note down. They are context. So in this example, we said there is a transportation context, and there are these three ontologies that help us contextualize. There's personalization, that specific, uh, you know, that matters, something that matters to you. And then abstraction, that, um, you know, um, you're talking about slow traffic. Slow traffic is not written in the text. It has to be defined and understood and, you know, computed, right? And that, uh, those are the interesting concepts that um, uh, would, are seeing a lot more research and we'll see more research as we go along. Okay, any quick question? Uh, looks like I did not complete what I had uh, planned for today, so we'll continue that. But um, I may also uh, give you material to read for, uh, in, you know, further on so that you can, you know, prepare yourself ahead of the time. Is there anywhere uh, we can find the two slide presentations that you shared, or could you send yeah, them? Yeah, I will. I will. I will post them uh, in, in our. Um, um, they, they are online. Uh, I'll just post the link or some. One, one or the other, you'll have it by tomorrow. Uh, I'll put it in a, as a comment, uh, just so that uh, you guys know this extra material. Uh, I'll put it as a comment of my original, uh, you know, plan for the class three.
So don't look for the new posts. Look for you know uh, post that is um, uh, you know so so that everything is together about you know that material. Otherwise, uh, for the same matter, the there'll be multiple posts and you'll you'll have other challenges. There's no perfect solution, but this is probably the best. Okay. All right. Talk to you next week. Bye. Thank you.